Welcome to the US Eagle Claw YouTube channel. The war that broke out in Ukraine greatly increased its impact all over the world. As the ninth month of the war ends, the Ukrainian war will be mentioned in the war literature for centuries. With the Ukraine war, it became clear that the old army habits should be abandoned completely and new war strategies should be used. It has been seen that the use of unmanned aerial and naval vehicles and autonomous warfare systems is much more important in modern wars than the effectiveness of infantry forces. Another aspect of the war was that it changed all the strategic balances in the world. Russian President Vladimir Putin's army entered Ukraine on February 24th, threatening the world with the pretext of preventing NATO expansion in Eastern Europe. However, NATO, whose ties were on the verge of breaking within itself, became more united than ever before as a result of this move and expanded NATO's borders even more. Statements about NATO were generally that the alliance had completed its mission. Especially just before the war broke out, French President Emmanuel Macron said that NATO was dysfunctional and he specifically wanted the establishment of a new military unit in Europe against it. While Putin was trying to disrupt the NATO expansion he was aiming for, he clinched the current NATO power. With the participation of Finland and Sweden, the Baltic Sea, which Russia attaches great importance to, has started to become a NATO lake. After these developments, NATO increased its organizations in the Baltic and the Baltic Sea began to be filled with NATO warships. The Baltic Sea automatically becomes a NATO inland sea when Finland and Sweden complete their full accession process to the alliance. Russia, on the other hand, did not remain unresponsive and carried out exercises in the region continuously. However, the incident that took place the other day showed us that the tension had reached its highest level. Russian warplanes flew within 80 yards of NATO ships in another close call. The military alliance warned Russia that the close call increased the risk of miscalculation, error and accident. NATO ships were conducting routine operations when the two Russian aircraft approached in an unsafe and unprofessional manner. Russian fighter jets came within 80 yards of the ships and were flying just 90 feet high. NATO warned it would respond appropriately to any intervention in the future amid extremely high tensions. This happened after the world went on red alert for fears that a missile bouncing from the Ukrainian-Russian war had hit a Polish village and the UK Royal Navy's aircraft carrier HMS Queen was making its way to the Baltic. For this reason, the danger was announced directly from the red alert level. Any direct attack on a single member of NATO risks plunging the entire military bloc into an armed conflict with Russia. Worryingly, the US revealed that even as relations between Washington and Moscow had hit rock bottom, back-channel communications remained open to prevent war from breaking out in the hours after the Polish explosion. This event, which took place at such a tense moment, was enough to make everyone nervous. Russia is not ready to go to war with NATO. However, they are trying to keep their moves in order to stop the tension in the Baltic. They cannot afford to lose the Baltic entirely, even if it would not be in Russia's interest to escalate these tensions. However, at the last NATO meeting, NATO Secretary General Stoltenberg announced that they were making more preparations against Russia. Speaking at the 68th annual session of the NATO Parliamentary Assembly, Stoltenberg said the alliance has brought more troops to a higher state of readiness. He also stressed that the alliance is ready to support Ukraine in the long term. Stoltenberg said, Yes, I know this support comes at a cost. Many people in our countries are facing a cost of living crisis. These are difficult times for many. But the price we pay as NATO allies is measured in money. Ukrainians, on the other hand, pay a price measured in blood. And if we let Putin win, we will all have to pay a much higher price. He stated that it would be a great danger for the authoritarian regimes in the world to learn that they can get what they want with brute force. And this will have consequences that will directly threaten their security. He stated that they are aware that the world may become much more dangerous as a result of the development of these events. Stoltenberg also warned that he should not underestimate Russia, which has significant military capabilities and a large number of troops and is willing to inflict significant losses and terrible suffering on the Ukrainian people. He noted that 2020 marks the eighth consecutive year of increased defense spending in Europe and Canada, 
over $350 billion will have been spent in excess by the end of the year, he added. The NATO Secretary General had previously stated that the war would most likely end at a certain stage at the negotiating table. At the same time, he stated that they know that the outcome of these negotiations depends on the strength on the battlefield. Therefore, if a peaceful solution to this conflict is desired, it is necessary to make sure that Ukraine is strong on the battlefield. It is an indisputable fact that this is the best way, stating that they can contribute to a peace that will allow Ukraine to remain an independent sovereign nation. Stoltenberg said that they can deploy military support to Ukraine so that there can be an acceptable negotiated solution at the end of this war. Stoltenberg also said that production of military equipment and ammunition should be increased as NATO is depleting its stock significantly. At the end of October, Stoltenberg also appealed to Ukraine to increase its attempts to increase its military support so that NATO troops could fight effectively in winter conditions. This request was answered and the support given to Ukraine increased tremendously. On the other hand, as the Ukraine war rages, NATO allies face Russian supremacy in the Arctic. Located in the Svalbard archipelago off Norway, the world's largest satellite Earth station is used by Western space agencies to collect vital signals from polar orbiting satellites. This January, one of the two fiber optic cables connecting Svalbard to the mainland snapped on the Arctic seafloor. Norway had to rely on a backup connection. In April 2021, another cable used by a Norwegian research lab to monitor activity on the Arctic seafloor broke. As the Russian invasion of Ukraine ended the post-Cold War era of low tension and cooperation, such events illustrate how difficult it is for states to monitor their own waters, particularly in the Arctic, an ocean one, and a half times the size of the United States. States where satellites are essential to enable real-time detection and monitoring of activity. In recent years, NATO allies and Russia have increased military exercises in the region. Chinese and Russian warships held a joint exercise in the Bering Sea in September. Norway raised its military alert level in October but the West is following Russia in military presence. Since 2005, Russia has reopened dozens of Soviet-era military bases in the Arctic, modernized its navy, and developed new hypersonic missiles designed to evade US sensors and defenses. Four Arctic experts say it will take at least 10 years for the West to catch up with the Russian army in the region. This time it is actually in NATO's hands, because Russia lost a great deal of time with the Ukraine war and destroyed the next 30 years with its own hands. The Arctic is a dark region on the map right now, said Kettle Olsen, Norway's former military representative to NATO and the European Union, and head of the Norwegian state-controlled Andoea Space Company, which tests new military and surveillance technologies and launches research rockets. General Glenn Van Herk, chief of the US Northern Command, said at a Senate hearing in March that the United States needed better Arctic area awareness to detect and address Russia and China's capabilities to launch advanced missiles and destroy communications infrastructure. In a Pentagon strategy paper released in October, the United States has committed to improving early warning and surveillance systems in the Arctic, but the pace of planned modernization is uncertain. At the same time, rapidly rising temperatures are posing problems for some US military infrastructures built on melting permafrost foundations. The Pentagon says, Coastal erosion could also affect U.S. radar sites. U.S. officials and military analysts say there is little risk in the near future. The West is much stronger than Russia in conventional forces, and Russia's limited success in Ukraine has revealed weaknesses in the West that many did not expect. In addition to Eastern Europe, the water crisis in the Baltic Sea and the Arctic between NATO and Russia may appear in the coming years. The two forces that are looking for ways to solve this crisis will come into serious contact for these regions in about 20 years. Thanks for watching.